Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to tear apart the Raspberry Pi 400 and take a look at what's inside. We're also going to take a look at a few tips on using your Raspberry Pi 400 in some different ways, ways that you may not be aware of. We'll set up a 240 gigabyte SATA SSD drive to the Pi 400 and what you might expect when running your Raspberry Pi 400 off a power bank connected to a monitor. And I've got a little surprise for you at the very end. Let's go ahead and get started. One thing that immediately drew me to the Pi 400 is how reminiscent it is of classic computers such as this one. This is the TI-994A, my first computer, and it's similar conceptually in that it is a keyboard and a computer all in one. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with the Pi 400, kind of a flashback to the early 80s, of course much more powerful. One of the things I was very curious about after I received my Pi 400 is what does it look like on the inside? So I use this plastic tool in order to pry open the case. A metal tool would likely damage the plastics. From there I was able to get inside and if I fold it out just a little bit here we see the connector for the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that up and remove the small ribbon cable here and it has a massively large heat sink going across so I'm going to go ahead and remove the four screws that are attaching the heat sink to the chassis and there is some thermal adhesive that's holding it together so you have to gently pry it up and there's the adhesive and now I'm going to go ahead and pull these tabs out just a little bit so we can pop the board out itself and take a closer look at what the Pi 400 board looks like while the Pi 400 shares most all of the same components as the Raspberry Pi 4, it is certainly laid out differently and includes a slightly faster CPU, about 300 megahertz faster, using the Broadcom BCM2711, and includes 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. There's the keyboard connector as well as the GPIO. Now we'll take a quick look at the back of the board, just in case you're curious what this looks like. And I'm going to move rather fast through this piece of it, and even faster when I go to put it all back together again. If you've ever wanted to tinker with electronics yourself, well, you can get a kit that's pretty cool. It comes with all these components that you see here as well as a cobbler, which I'll show you in just a moment. This cobbler, basically you take this ribbon cable and plug it into the cobbler itself, and the other end into the Raspberry Pi 400. Then with the included breadboard, you can wire up the ground over to the negative side over here. And then I'll plug in this 220 ohm resistor into pin number 21 on the GPIO pin. The longer pin on the LED goes into the positive side and the shorter one goes into the negative. So I'm going to put the negative in first and the positive on the same row as the resistor. Then I'll go into programming in the Thonny Python IDE and load up this program, which is one I typed in, and then I'll hit run. And the LED should blink. There we go. Very cool. While this is the simplest of examples, it certainly does demonstrate that you can do some pretty awesome stuff using the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi 400. Now we're going to run the Pi 400 off a battery bank. And this is one I picked up recently. I've got it fully charged. It has two charging inputs, micro USB and USB-C, as well as two outputs. And this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery that has two USB outputs at 5 volt, 3 amps on each port. So now I'm going to take the Raspberry Pi 400 and go ahead and connect up this USB-C to USB Type-A cable. And we'll go ahead and plug it into one of the outputs here. And the opposite end, I'll go ahead and plug into my lapel portable monitor. 
And then we'll plug in this micro HDMI to mini HDMI cable into the Raspberry Pi 400 and then the other end into the lapel monitor. So now the monitor is fully hooked up. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the mouse into the USB 2.0 port and the USB-C to USB Type-A. We'll go ahead and plug into the Raspberry Pi 400. And after everything is plugged in, yes, you will have a little bit of a rat's nest of uh, cables and adapters, which you can kind of tuck behind the monitor. Uh, but I went ahead and decided to go ahead and play YouTube videos for quite some time and see how the battery performed. And after about two and a half hours of constant YouTube video playback, the battery had only drained down to 67%. So that was pretty impressive to me because I could probably go another two and a half hours or more. In December of 2020, there was a new release of the Pi OS that has some extremely important updates. For instance, there have been improvements to Chromium to support better video quality playback on YouTube. And of course, it also impacts the overall usage of Chromium as well. Pulse Audio has also been implemented, which provides a better way of mixing audio inputs. Printing support has always been somewhat of a pain on the Raspberry Pi, but now it's fully integrated as well. It makes it easy to connect up to your printers. To get this update, simply open a terminal window and enter these commands individually, one at a time. Press enter and follow the prompts. And soon, you'll be on the latest release of Pi OS on your Pi 400. The next thing we're going to take a look at is setting up the Raspberry Pi 400 with an SSD as our boot drive instead of a micro SD. To do that, I'm going to use this adapter and plug it into this 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD. So we just plug it in like that. And you want to make sure that you plug it into the USB 3.0 ports. So make sure you're plugging it into the blue ports. So we'll go ahead and plug it in, and from there we're going to download the Pi OS Imager. To do that, you want to go to raspberrypi.org forward slash software, and then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it's available for a number of operating systems, including Ubuntu, Windows, as well as Mac OS. But we want it for the Pi OS, so we're going to copy this and open a terminal window and paste it into the terminal. Press enter. And once you do that, it'll prompt you to press Y and enter and go ahead and allow that to download. And once downloaded, if you go to the accessories and select Imager, you'll now load up the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll then click Choose OS and as you can see there's a number of operating systems that you can pick from. If you want to select one, just simply click it and it'll show you a list of all the operating systems that are available under that list. Uh, for instance, if we go to RetroPie, you'll see down at the bottom Raspberry Pi 4 and 400. And you can also select others like Risk OS or Ubuntu. Or if you want to erase it, you could do that. But I'm going to go up and select Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. And then where it says SD card, we're going to choose the Kingston SSD and then click the right button. If you're sure everything's correct, hit yes. You may be prompted for a password, so go ahead and type that in and click OK. And it will go ahead and write Pi OS to this SSD. Then you can click the continue button and close out the Pi OS imager. Now I'm going to select Logout and shut down the Pi 400. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the micro SD. We don't need that anymore, as now we can hit Function F10 and boot up on our new SSD drive. When it first boots up, it'll do the expanding of the file system, and then you'll be prompted with the configuration wizard where you can step through it. If you're unfamiliar with that, please check out my video on Raspberry Pi 400 setup, and it'll walk you through it. 
The differences in speed between the micro SD was 15,655 kilobytes per second versus 326,049 kilobytes per second on the SSD. Quite an impressive difference. I love playing Retro Pi on the Raspberry Pis, whether it's the 3B Plus, the Pi 4, or the 400. It's wonderful. And over the years, I've tried a lot of different controllers, such as this one, or this wireless controller. So I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek of some things to come on the channel, such as this 8-bit Do arcade stick. I have found a few issues with this controller that I'm hoping to find a solution for before I make a video on it, and may or may not recommend it. And the most exciting controller to me personally is this one. It was a Kickstarter from my buddy Glenn over at Glenn's Retro Show. It was designed to go into an arcade machine, an arcade one up, but here you'll see a 3D printed open cage solution that will allow you to play it easily on your desktop so you can play all kinds of games that were difficult to play. Now you'll be able to play them on your Raspberry Pi 4, your 400, as well as your PCs. The models for this 3D print were designed by myself, so you're not likely to see them on any other channel soon. And if this looks interesting to you, definitely subscribe to the channel, ring that little bell to make sure you're notified as soon as it's available. Speaking of availability, the GRS Yoke will be on Amazon either late December or early January 2021. I hope you found this Raspberry Pi 400 teardown and tips video helpful and that maybe you have learned something that you didn't know before you watched the video. That's always my goal. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. I really appreciate it. It lets me know that I did something right, <laughs> which is always good. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk in the future, please subscribe. Ring that little bell to make sure you get notifications when new videos are released. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you very soon.